Ms. Tier and staff, thank you for having us here today to speak on the matter of altering our retirement systems. As I mentioned, I am Sean Corcoran, the president of the Fairfax Coalition of Police, International Union of Police Associations. I'm also a Fairfax County Police Detective working in our Major Crimes Division, uh, and I'm very proud to be standing here with other employees and members of our safe uh, coalition, uh, firefighters and paramedics, sheriff's deputies, general county employees, teachers and school personnel, and I'm also very proud to be standing with members of our community uh, that find this matter to be incredibly important. The question remains to be asked, how did we get here? And we just kind of talked about it a little bit prior, but, and I don't mean to rehash the last few months, grinding months and years, but the larger question of how we as a society got to this point, where we continue to fight tooth and nail over the matter of effective retirement security. To do so, we have to go back to the back decades, to the heady days of the 1970s, and the birth of the vaunted 401k, and its greater manifestation defined contribution. Compared to what Wall Street and anti-defined benefit security entities would have us believe, it was not some sort of magic bullet conjured up in the basement of Princeton or MIT by a crack team of Nobel Prize winning economists. It was the work of a heads-up consultant in the suburbs of Philadelphia, utilizing an obscure part of a newly added section of the tax code in 1978 and making it work for long-term cash serving, saving options for, to benefit bank employees. With further changes in support in tax laws and investments, the practice became more widely accepted. It was still seen as a tool to support retirement systems and not a new retirement system in itself. However, over the coming years, it became quite evident how lucrative these systems were. And to be fair, when used in the manner that it was initially intended, they are great vehicles to support a healthy retirement plan, like our own deferred compensation program. Throughout the 80s and 90s and 2000s, we saw private sector retirement systems evaporate. Many of these systems were already on tenuous footing. But the advent of defined contribution allowed corporations to simply push the easy button rather than trying to fix substantial issues that impacted many of these systems. We as individuals were sold on the belief that we were stronger on our own, masters of our own domains as we sat playing in front of our computers, moving investments at the click of a button, never realizing that with every click our fund managers were taking a piece regardless of the transaction performed or it didn't. Take these two scenarios. What was the overall backlash to Wells Fargo and the fraud they committed? They created millions of credit, fake credit card and bank accounts. No one looked to sue them when these practices were revealed. There was no groundswell of investors pushing on funds and managers to take actions. What happened? A healthy dose of exasperation, dismay for a new cycle or two, and a couple high production commercials with lots of cowboys and horse-drawn wagons telling us things will be better. As stated by Professor David Weber of Boston University, we 401k holders are the world's ideal source of capital. We let ourselves be charged high fees that we do not understand. We accept poor returns quarter after quarter. We never sue for our, for our rights. We never vote as shareholders, and we never tell our investment managers how we think they ought to vote. We are beyond passive. We are supine. Contrast that with what happens when a fund manager underperforms in one of our retirement funds. As I have seen and can personally attest to, they're picking up the phone on the first ring, and on many occasions they are on the next flight into town from wherever they are to stand in person before our boards. In a larger context, defined benefit retirement systems have brought almost all of the most successful shareholder lawsuits, such as suits against Enron and WorldCom, and it was in fact defined benefit retirement systems that have brought legal action against the aforementioned Wells Fargo. What does this mean to us in Fairfax County? This whole process has been governed by what is owed and what it will, it will cost to pay retirees. Yet we barely even looked at how our retirement systems vest our money and, and their ability to exercise our voice. When you do that, you find it is that our retirement systems are strong. They are well run. They are well funded and trending upwards. There is no need to be here mired in a completely contrived crisis. Quite frankly, we can't see what benefit this board can do that our retirement boards can't through their solid investment strategies and the fiduciary responsibility they have to the county, its citizens, and respective fund members. All that the actions proposed for your consideration do is artificially meddle in the retirement systems, putting pressure on their management and create caste systems within the ranks of employees. We ask that you vote no on the matter before you. Allow our retirement boards to do their jobs and finally put this matter to rest. 
There are far more pressing issues that need our attention rather than continuing to tear up to our retirement systems once a board term. And if we need to continue to keep jumping on this hamster wheel, let's actually look at the whole picture and have our retirement boards at the table. Thank you.